the race for the eNASCAR iRacing Series Championship takes us to Texas Motor Speedway and No Limits, Texas. Good evening, everybody. I am Nick Stein, joined alongside Taylor Burris with Austin Derbyshire in the production truck tonight. And we are set for a good race, especially if we're going to have one like what we had Monday night in the top split A Open SOF. And tonight is going to be a good one. It is Texas Motor Speedway, which for whatever reason decides to race really good on sim, but not very good in real life. So... Here's the hope, and we're going to have a really good race tonight. And Taylor, ah, man, I am truly excited for this one tonight. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone, as we are here deep in the heart of Texas, me and Nick's home state, as we are just outside of Dallas here in the Fort Worth area at No Limits, Texas, as they take their way through, heading down into this track. This one-and-a-half-mile circuit is providing a lot of great racing action here throughout the year. Of course, like you said, with the new... Changes to track. Hopefully, we'll see some new changes to help bring back some great great racing right here at Tech Motor Speedway. Anyway, in, in the future, this track still has provided a great history of some exciting races, whether it be of course in the NASCAR series and many more. But tonight, qualifying is currently still underway, Nick, and we're going to see who's going to set the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, right now it's sitting at Sean Conklin with a 29-162, and he's got a, he's got a pretty good lead sitting at about six hundredths of a second over Andrew Navarro right now. So, looks like he's got this pole pretty much well wrapped up with qualifying over. But I believe you do have some keys to the race for us. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a look at a couple of keys to the race here tonight. Starting off is going to be, of course, tire management will be a big key here tonight. Of course, taking care of those right side tires as they are going to be important to make sure you get through each stage of tonight's race at many different opportunities for tonight. Second key to the race is your pit entry and your pit exit. Of course, this tra track here also has one of the most interesting pit entries and pit exits because if you think about it, your pit exit for that blue cone is right in the middle of that corner. So you got to be careful of where you set it up and be careful of how you get on to the racetrack as well as onto the track because you're coming in at high rates of speed in order to work around. And finally, be prepared to call to audibles. You know, when it's time for the race, do what the leaders don't do if you're in a position to go up in there and try and see if you can try to steal a victory away and capture the flag here in the Lone Star State. Yeah, get some broadcast picks here tonight. Tonight, I'm going to go ahead and take the two car of Nicholas Roman. I believe he's got a pretty good fast car under him. He's had a pretty good race uh, in the A Open SOF. Unfortunately, wasn't able to come away with it after some craziness there at the end. Well, for me, I I'm going to go with a different driver tonight. I'm going to go with the 42 or the number three of Andrew Navarro. He's always been a strong competitor, and he's going to be one to watch, I have to say for sure, as we'll watch him as Austin Derbyshire only picks our very own from Grid Vision, Austin Edstrom. So hopefully Darby doesn't give him the uh, curse of the picks here tonight and cost Austin a chance to not take home the checkered flag. I feel like every time that uh, Darby has chosen Austin or... Uh, Justin Levine in one of these races, they've had a uh, rough go of luck. So hopefully that that's able to change tonight. But it, it, it is still, still, still waiting to be seen because Texas is unpredictable on iRacing. But speaking or uh, going away from the unpredictability, let's go and get into our starting lineup real quick. I mean, on pole you got the four car of Sean Conklin with Garrett Mains to his outside. These two had a stellar battle in the a open sof these two were pretty much nose to tail that entire race and then starting in row number two is andrew navarro with nicholas roman as mentioned earlier fifth position gonna be matt deciani with jr borborema in sixth position patrick gitter gonna be in seventh with alan pajari in eighth paul bergoli is gonna be in ninth position with joshua watson rounding out your top 10. in 11th position you're gonna find austin fitzgerald with brendan himmel in 12th position Straight Vision's own Justin Prince, well, he's going to be starting in 13th position alongside Anthony Frederico in 14th. 15th and 16th will be Joshua Gath Gathright and Luke Doran with Derek Heitman and Roger Pierce in 17th and 18th. Rounding out your top 10 is Jonathan Oshalim and Johnny Baldridge. Starting in 21st 21st, excuse me, position tonight is going to be Matt Cox with Miller Bonds in 22nd position. Nicholas Padovich in 23rd with Nolan Hodgson in 24th. Richard Garcia going to be in 25th position with Alan Wilson in 26th. Matt Hollaball going to be starting in 27th with Clayton Hoff in 28th. Matt, Tart, excuse me, Tommy Gossett going to be starting in 29th position with Edward Shearer Jr. in 30th. And rounding out your field tonight is going to be Robert Miller in 31st, Damon Brunette in 32nd. 
Uh, excuse me, 33rd is going to be Maggie McGuire with Trevor, uh, Trevor Trago in 34th, Austin Edstrom in 35th, and Pedro Palladino in 36th. Going to be a little bit of a start from the rear and work your way up to the front for Mr. Austin Edstrom as Fred, the pace car driver, will get themselves ready to go. But I got to say, Nick, it's going to be exciting to watch the action here tonight at Texas. Drivers are excited. I mean, we're about to hit about a third of the race season so far at next week at Talladega. A lot of things still to keep an eye on for this championship. So I got to say, what can we expect to see here tonight with some of these drivers who are just trying to get as many points as they can and making sure did everyone make it to the grid i think so uh no they didn't garrett mains did not make the grid oh boy i wonder if that means he yeah, did like miss gonna be yeah he's gonna be starting from the pits here but uh, in terms of what we're expecting tonight i mean you take a look back at uh kind of what we had monday night in the sof race and it was it it, it was kind of slow you know tire saving for the first 50 or so laps and then we got into uh, that that first caution after about 52 laps and things just kind of kicked off after that you know it was three four wide I mean we saw people running up next to the wall in the next gen which shouldn't be possible at Texas but it is so uh, things I do expect are going to be that they're going to be a little bit slow at first but uh, it, it will get more and more intense as the race goes on well, absolutely indeed, but uh, of course, Nick, it is your time here tonight to bring us to the green flag as uh, Fred, hashtag bring back Benny, is leading the field behind the iRacing pace car. You know what? I'm, I'm going to make you happy. I'm just I'm going to say Benny the pace car driver all night. How, how does that sound? That, that makes me happy, but, uh, you know, we ha we do have to follow what iRacing does say. That is his name is Fred. So Fred the pace car driver going to be making that hard, hard left turn onto pit road, the incredibly rough transition here at Texas Motor Speedway and the green flag will be in the hands of Sean Conklin here as he's gonna wait gotta wait to the Geico restart zone here and here it is green flag in the air here at Texas Motor Speedway Sean Conklin getting a good jump Roman gonna be on that outside line he's got uh, Andrew Navarro to his inside and kind of single file out pretty quickly here Absolutely. Sean Conklin will lead the field out of turn number two all by himself. Navarro and Vroman try to slide into position. For some of the drivers who are inside the top five, top seven, they're going to try to be content, find their place, and then just start logging laps. Everyone else is going to be a little bit aggressive, wanting to try to get towards the front of the field before they start settling down, but everyone just hugging that white line through the oh, middle of the four. The car in the grass here on the front straightaway. Oh, and he's going to make some more contact. That's going to send a couple of cars around. Caution going to be out on the racetrack here. I believe that is Andrew Dyson there. That's actually Jonathan Oshalem. Apologies for that. Tough break for Jonathan Oshalem right there in the McConey setup machine. Just didn't quite clear himself to get back up onto the racetrack. So a tough break for him. He did collect one other driver. I believe that was... Anthony Federico in the number seven machine. I'm pretty sure uh, Federico was the first one to go spinning there, and then he's the one who caught the 99 of Oshalem there. But things kicking off early here at Texas Motor Speedway. You see here coming up off of turn number four, it looks like a car gets in the wall, gets down into Federico there, and Federico comes up and ooh man. But a contact between the two, and that's going to send Oshalom around. And luckily, he doesn't hit anything major. But still going to be a rough start for a car that was sitting right at the edge of the top 15 there. He's going to catch the car who made the contact with the outside wall. It looked like to be car number five. Let's see who that was. Yeah, it looks like those are. I can't quite catch who that is. Well, it could be. See right here, Luke Doran, who made contact with him in the number five high side motorsports machine. Yeah, that all happened here at Texas. You know, you get in the dirty air coming off of four, and you got what five cars all side by side right in front of you, and that dirty air hits that splitter and up you go into that outside wall and that was one of my keys uh, Monday night is watch out for the dirty air off of four especially when you're in a pack like you are at the start of these races uh, on the cold tires as well I mean 
uh, you can get that dirty air and just go straight in the wall and not really have any con control over what happens. No, you cannot. And it really is difficult, especially coming off of turn number four here at this track. you got to be careful with how you set your car off quarter exit because that wall can easily come out and get you real quickly and pull you in just like we saw right there. Yeah, and that's typically the strategy, or, well, not strategy, I guess the, the way you take uh, the exit of four there is you try to come up off, off the corner as straight as you can to avoid sliding the rear tires. And, you know, like I said, that mixed with the 30 air, that's going to result a car, uh, with a car on the wall. And as mentioned earlier, when you're in the mid middle of a pack like you were for Luke Doran there, that's going to result in a couple of cars going spinning. But luckily, nobody else involved in that. It was just two cars spinning, not hitting anything else there. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to keep an eye on that. Absolutely. We're going to keep an eye on the situation here, and hopefully we'll get to go back racing as the lights are out on the pace car. Yeah, lights are out on the pace car. Not really much shuffling there uh, at the start, uh, considering we only did get the one lap. I mean, it's still Sean Conklin leading with Nicholas Roman to his outside. Andrew Navarro d does lose a position, though. He's starting or restarting in fourth position uh, as J.R. Borborama got around him and in, into third position. Matt DeCiano is going to be in fifth position with Patrick Gitter in sixth. Seventh going to be Joshua Watson with Alan Pajari. Paul Bergoli and Brennan Himmel going to be rounding out your top 10 tonight. A couple of movers already so far tonight. We've got Joshua Watson picking up three there as he has gone from 10th to 7th. We've got Brennan Himmel. He's gone from 12th to 10th there. And it's been 40. And Garrett Maines does already have his lap back as well. So that's going to be crucial seeing as he did start second position. If you want to see something exciting, watch that number 12 machine work his way up to the field during this green flag run, if that works out for him. He is going to be one to watch and put on a big show to see him slice and dice through the field. Yeah, he's going to be restarting 29th for this restart, so he has got a pretty good chunk of work to do in that number 12 machine to get back up here and get back to where he's used to being in these NIS races because... He is our NIS points leader as the pace car does make that left turn back onto pit road. The safety of pit road here. Sean Conklin has the control and he's going to hit it early. Green flag back in the air here at Texas Motor Speedway as Sean Conklin pulls out a couple of car links over Nicholas Roman. Roman crucially gets clear to the inside. Looks like they're going to go three wide for a moment just a little bit further back out of, out of the picture. You see right there, a couple of vehicles going three wide for position. That's Alan Pajara along with several other drivers. Bergoli and Himmel trying to jockey around for that eighth position as they go three wide. Still maintaining. How about this? Justin Prince thinks about going four wide off turn number four. Himmel makes it work, though, but he, and he gets clear. That's going to put him up a couple positions. Justin Prince in the wall there. Uh, through the trioval, keeps it straight, though. He's going to take it all the way up into that third lane. That's not something we're used to seeing in the next gen here. He's taking it up and uh, trying to make that outside line work. And looks like he's doing a pretty decent job of it. Is it's going to get him a pretty good run going here? Not really anywhere to go as he's boxed in. He's one of the only few drivers who's going to go right up to the outside wall through the middle of turn three and four. But you've got to be careful because of Ooh. that right there. <laughs> you just saw it. How close he was hitting to that outside wall off turn four. Plus, he was boxed in. That could have caused him to get a little bit pinched by the other cars. But now he's going to stay tucked up to the outside lane as best that he can, along with a couple of other drivers off turn two. Yeah, we saw it in the B-Open SOF Xfinity race where we had a couple of guys running that outside line all the way around. And it was working in the Xfinity car. It's not the same case, though, with the Cup car. With the way the downforce works on this car, you really can't work the outside line here at Texas like you can in other cars. You see a couple of cars almost getting into the wall through the trial, but they're three wide further ahead here. Or uh, right behind this is Paul Bergoli through the middle. You've got a couple of cars passing him there. That was Austin Fitzgerald. You got Alan Pajari making moves here as well. Yeah, Pajari's trying to hold that inside lane as best that he can of that number 32 machine, but he is struggling for grip right now. And blocked off a little bit by Bergoli, Fitzgerald, and Heitman in the mix who are jockeying around and battling for ninth. Yeah, this is what we saw in the A Open SOF race Monday night is these guys in the midfield, you know, the. the upper end of the top 10, the lower end of the top 15. Uh, these guys were all just jockeying for position all night, and it, it, it was just basically a hornet's nest all night, and it looks like we're setting up for something similar here, as these guys have not really calmed down since the, since the drop of the green flag and the subsequent restart after that early caution, and these guys have just been 
going at each other's throats for the for, for the better part of the last 10 laps. Yeah, and, and that's going to be a little bit of a detriment and a benefit for some. A detriment for the drivers who are just racing super hard here, not trying to hug the inside lane as best they can. Those who are going up to that outside line at this point in time, they're burning those right side tires very quickly. So as we get progress further into this run, that's going to cause a lot of deterioration on the tires. That's going to cause them to start falling further and further back compared to those who are trying to hug that white line through the middle of the corners. That's helping save some of that tire degradation and it's going to be critical for them as they progress further into this run so that way they can still progress up through the field. But right now, we're watching Garrett Mains. He's now already inside the top 20. He's in 16th position and wanting more as he tries to get around Justin Prince for 15th. Yeah, Garrett Mains is not a guy you want to mess with, especially at Texas. He is one of the fastest guys when it comes to Texas Motor Speedway. This, this man cannot be stopped, and he is moved multiple positions already. I believe that's going to be his 15th position since the restart. So Garrett Mayans not messing around here after having to miss the start for unknown reasons. Uh, uh, unknown to us as of now, but he is in all intents and purposes of the word hauling as he's going to get a little bit loose there off of turn number two and it's going to allow Johnny Baldridge there to get to his inside, but not for long as Garrett Mayans is going to take it to the outside of Austin Fitzgerald and coming off a of four looks like he will have that position Prince got a little bit loose off turn number four he had a dip back and back down quite significantly in order just to not hit the wall of turn number four that causes a big accordion effect where several drivers nearly run into the back of each other but they're able to gather back up and continue on racing for the moment right here you see the 20 machine along with several others shocking around for position here as we watch this battle, of course, this is where Garrett Mains is as he is trying to work his way up into the top 10. This is Johnny Baldridge, Fitzgerald, Garcia, and Hollybog. Hollybog in that position. Yeah, Matt Hollybog is kind of running the popcorn position here. Just not really wanting to get involved in this and just letting these guys fight it out. Ooh, car loose there. Who is that? That is Alan Pajari really loose off the corner there. Almost took out Garrett Mains for just a moment there, but he keeps it straight. Keeps it going here. He's going to fall back into the clutches of Johnny Baldridge in that 17 machine, who's working on defending from Richard Garcia in that 57. Well, we're halfway through the run of tires here, pretty much, for the drivers. This is where we're starting to see how well your car is as we progress further into the run. Is this the part where your car starts to dip off a little bit and causes some struggles for you? Or is this where the car kind of plateaus, stays a little bit, where you have to try to just be careful of how you manage your equipment and then start to pick back up again as we progress further into the run? This is that sweet spot where we'll see who has the best equipment for tonight. Yeah, that's what we saw uh, throughout the week mostly is people saving for this first run, just trying to find what their car can do and figure out what it can do but back up front jeez I, I had been keeping an eye on the on the lead and Sean Conklin and Nicholas Vroman they've pulled a steady two and a half seconds over the rest of the field just just not really much care in that camp right now because of how far out in front they are of Andrew Navarro in, in fourth place there J.R. Borborema so yeah that, that Ryko camp is they, they, they came to play tonight well, with how the positioning is right now, they're about three seconds ahead of Navarro almost. This gives them time to really take care of their equipment and not really push it, especially for Conklin and Broman. They are, even though they're not on the same team in a sense, they are still set up teammates. So they are working together. Try not to overextend the tires, degrade them too much. So that way, when we get to that first pit stop, they're in pretty decent hands and can maybe even stretch it out a little further and also gives them a chance to maybe save a little bit of fuel here and there. Hey, uh, looking at screen here, you got uh, uh, Joshua Watson and Brandon Himmel here side by side. They, these guys have been side by side for the better part of five or six laps now as Watson's going to get loose, going to get up into the 76 of Derek Heitman. Heitman going to have to check up big time and now Paul Bricoli is going to be inserted into this battle as... Man, Watson got really loose there and kind of hip-checked the 76 of Heitman there. And gets, wow. Yeah, I got below that white line. That's the thing. When you're on that white line there, Nick, you are on a knife's edge. You stay above it, you might be okay, but you might also degrade your tires a little bit. You go below it, 
you're going to be like that, spinning out of control. But if you stay right on the edge of it, that is where you get the best tire cons uh, conservation, the best run. That is the preferred line when it comes to it. Look right here as Broman, as well as also Conklin, just run right up against that white line. And then you see Navarro. He's just about half a lane off of it just to tick where he needs to try to get down on that white line. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the... the, the difficult parts about Texas is that's where you have to drive the car. You gotta drive it on that white line or else you're not gonna have any rotation. You're just gonna be burning that right front tire off, but uh, you know, uh, we were getting into that on our Monday night broadcast and it's you know, kind of a double-edged sword. You know, you, you, you run on that white line, you're able to save that right front a little bit, but you're uh, simultaneously really burning that right rear off and kind of making your car really loose. That's why we see a lot of single car spins here at Texas. Ooh, a little bit of contact there as things starting to kick off for about, this is about 20th position back here. Yeah, this is around where... Nolan Hodgson, Ed Sheeran. Ooh, Hodgson in the wall there. As he's to the outside of Ed Sheeran Jr. in that 24 car. These two have, have been at each other's throats at more than one occasion this season, so uh, tippers ought to be high between those two right now. As we watch, here comes Austin Edstrom as well. He's trying to get into the mix of this battle for it inside the top 20 to the 16th spot. There you see him. He'll go to that outside line. He is one of your biggest movers as far as on the start of the race where he started. So he is definitely going to be one to watch as he tries to go around the outside here on the top and making it work around Austin Fitzgerald. Give him that 19th position. He started in 35th position tonight, so he is definitely making some moves here. Now he's looking to the inside of the 24 of Ed Sheeran Jr. Looking for another position here as this is going to be a battle for 18th position back here. Austin Edstrom doing everything he can to... Get, get this track position on this run and set himself up for the rest of the race because if, if if you're one of these cars starting in the back and you're one of these guys that need the track position, you want to push on this first run and get that track position. And uh, that seems to be what Austin Edstrom is doing here, just doing everything he can to uh, get back up into this top 15, even the top 10 as Ed Sheeran Jr. gets in the wall to the inside. Austin Edstrom, three wide to the inside of Nolan Hodgson and Ed Sheeran Jr., He's going to squeeze at the 12 of Hodgson just a little bit, get a little bit tight under him. That's going to get tight off the corner. Ed Sheeran Jr. in the wall, but he gets out without a scratch somehow. Big time move right there by Ed Sheeran Jr. in that number 24 machine. He gathers it back up as we watch on through the field. Nolan Hodgson trying to make his way through. Shuts the door in front of Edstrom as we pick up our top four and five. Now is the number 40 machine of Brendan Hemmel having a decent run inside the top five. A little further back, here comes Mr. Garrett Maines. He's inside the top eight, trying to get around Joshua Watson and Derek Heitman for position. I, I find that funny. Garrett, Garrett Maines starts from the pits, and he's up in the top 10 before 30 laps are even up in the race. That is that that, that is just funny to me. He, he's, he is well and truly just playing with this food right now, and it, it's, it's not even really close. I mean... Garrett Maines, he's gone from, I believe he started 35th tonight, or 36th on the field, and got up into 29th before that first caution, and now sitting up in 8th place with pace that's similar and actually faster than Sean Conklin, and Roman, or not, excuse me, not Roman, and uh, Maines is in traffic right now as well, so the fact that he's running faster than Conklin right now really shows that uh, that 12 car's got the pace to win tonight. You're talking about one of the most diverse drivers in the iRacing community. You see he is currently competing in the NASCAR eNASCAR iRacing series presented by Coca-Cola. You see him compete, used to compete, in the off-road rally championships when we had that. And he is also a heck of a wheelman on the dirt, road racing. He's a multi-time top, not a top split winner, but, you know, overall or class winner in his endurance racing. So he knows a thing or two when it comes to racing on the sim. Ooh, Josh Watson gets loose. Heitman to the inside. This is for eighth position as Watson looks like he's going to give up that position. And no, actually, Watson fighting back pretty hard on the outside there. And he's going to retain that ninth position. He's going to hold on for the position at the moment as drivers now try to jockey for position further back. There's still that battle inside the top 20 right now. Edstrom along with Fitzgerald, Hodgson's. 
and Matt, and then Edward Shear Jr. just trying to fight their way through to catch up to Johnny Baldridge in the 15th spot. Yeah, these guys have been, this is kind of where our proverbial hornet's nest has set up, you know, that area of the race where it's just like, it seems like everyone is fighting constantly throughout the race, and it looks like it's set up for around this 18th, to about the, you know, 14th, 13th position, so these guys have been, you know, at each other's throats pretty much the whole race, and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon here. No, it's not. As there you see one driver get a little bit loose off corner exit right there. That looked like to be Miller Bonds in the number 12. He's now looking to the inside of Roger Pierce in the 27 machine. That Gossett Ford Mustang as they try to work their way through teammates between the two of them, both Ryko teammates and Gossett teammates, as they go side by side, heading down into turn one. Miller Bonds will try to get around Roger Pierce for position. Clears him not. Yes, he does clear him off turn two. Yeah, Roger Pierce setting up for the switchback, but Rod, uh, Richard Garcia gets to the inside of the 27 of Pierce down into turn number three. Uh, further back, three wide, as you got uh, uh, Clayton Hoffman, you got uh, Nolan Hodgson, and Matt Hollaball three wide off of turn number four here. Things starting to kick off big time here. Contact between Hoffman and Hodgson. Uh, these two just door banging down the front straightaway there, and more three wide offset behind these guys. And there you see Edstrom being like Kevin Harvick pushing Brad Keselowski into Jeff Gordon to cause that Hornets nets of a fight here at Texas Motor Speed we saw a couple of years ago. So <laughs> this is this is going to be a little interesting. Is Austin trying to instigate some trouble here for us in the early stages? Doesn't look like he will. Ooh, a couple of cars get into the, getting into the wall off of turn number four there. Hollaball and I believe Hoffman were in the wall as well as Edstrom going to take it all the way up to the third line there to try and get around the 15 of Matt Hollaball, but it doesn't look like it's going to work as now he's got a little bit of uh, pressure from behind in the likes of Joshua Gathray and Austin Fitzgerald, but Edstrom going to take it to the inside of the 15 of Hollaball and you got Justin Prince running the wall, brother. What are you doing? Uh, this is not the Ross Chastain track to do that. Almost a little bit of a contact there as Edstrom gets a little bit loose and Gathright, the beneficiary there, as he is now up a few positions. Gathright, another uh, person that's been in this top 15. Edstrom gets big time loose off a of two there and almost gets into the 89 of Gathright, but he keeps it straight somehow right in front of him. At the 15 of Matt Hollaball making a move on Clayton Hoffman in the 92. Hollaball going to get a little bit tight there. That's gonna allow Gathright to get in on this oh. battle. Oh, car on the wall there. Edstrom's around. Oh, and the seven of Federico's around too. Everybody saves it somehow. He saves it big time except for oh, Federico now. as caution comes out. But how about Austin Edstrom right there? Oh, 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 I thought that was a car that was about to nail Austin Edstrom there. I'm not gonna lie. Well, we're gonna take a look at this replay here, but uh there we go, Austin. You, you, you done goofed. Yeah, just the good old iRacing next-gen death wobble there. Just wasn't able to do anything. And Oh, man. Oh. Who was that that he caught? I have no idea who that was, but that was a hard hit. Well, that maybe Nicholas... Nope, not Nicholas Padovich. Um, Trevor Trago. Oh, man. Yeah, that is, that is a hellacious hit. Two of them, actually, as he caught another one there right at the end of that wreck. Yeah, that, that, that 87 is hurting. Yeah. It... And uh, with that caution, we'll go ahead and take our first commercial break of the night. We will be back after that and bring you more coverage here at Texas Motor Speedway for the NASCAR iRacing Series.
Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back here to No Limits Texas Motor Speedway for coverage of Top Split NIS here as we are under our second caution of the night after, for in terms of Texas, a pretty frankly big wreck as Austin Edstrom got turned uh, through the tri-oval and got nailed by a couple of different cars. But we are coming back to green flag here as Sean Conklin going to be leading the field here with Nicholas Roman to his outside, two names that uh, we really haven't talked about much tonight purely because they have been absolutely dominating, if we're, if we're being honest, as these two had, I believe it was a four and a half second lead at the time of caution between uh, these two and Andrew Navarro in third position. But yeah, these two have just been purely dominating tonight, and they got a little bit of company now as Garrett Maines is back within the top 10 for the first yeah. time tonight as he missed the start earlier. The pace car makes the Left turn on to pit road. Sean Conklin, once again, going to have control of this restart. And he's going to hit it late in the restart box. Green flag back in the air here at Texas Motor Speedway. He's going to pull another few car links over Nicholas Roman, who crucially gets clear of J.R. Borborema down into turn one. Great strategy call right there to just dive it down to the inside. Now we will see how this will play out for the competitors. They all got a fresh set of Goodyear tires on them, and they're going to now try to utilize them as best that they can up towards the front of the field to try to pull away like they did during the last run. Now we're going to see drivers throw further back, go three, four wide as Garrett Maines tries to go high, wide, and handsome up to the top, then slinks down to the middle of the racetrack in order to try to get around some of the competition. You got Patrick Gitter and Joshua Watson for company in front of him as he's trying to battle these two. Gitter, though, goes up to try and block the run, take away the air from the 12 of Garrett Maines. Maines takes it to the inside. Three wide off of turn number two for sixth position here as Garrett Maines is going to take it the aggressive route. And Joshua Watson going to back out of that, and uh, that's going to leave Patrick Gitter side by side right in front. Brandon Hemble and Andrew Navarro getting up in arms. It's, oh, man. Uh, uh, Hemble's going to get loose, and I think Garrett Maines got tight there off of turn number four, and that's going to allow uh, Andrew Navarro to run away for a second. Hemble going to get tight once again. Yeah, Maines was just trying to pull off crossover move right there, I have to say, Nick, as he now gathers it back up, continues on his way. Hemmel will hold on to that fifth spot for the moment as he will now try to dive it down to the bottom of the racetrack to try to see if he can hold off the hard charger of Garrett Maines and Joshua Watson who go to the top side to follow him around the track. 
So far, he will not clear him out and across the line. Maine still gets the fifth position, but just barely as Himmel will dive it back down to the bottom of the racetrack. And now Maine will concede to the position for the moment. Yeah, he gives the gives the good old crossover there to Brandon Himmel, but he's not going to get to the inside just yet. He shows the nose to the inside. He's going to dive it down into turn number three. Himmel's going to give him the line, but he's fighting back here on the outside. But coming up off of turn number four, Garrett Maine's going to cut the nose off of the 40 of Brandon Himmel, and that's going to be battle over, and that's going to promote Garrett Maine's up into that fifth spot and kind of calm down there as further back he got... Uh, Roger Pierce going around the outside pretty aggressively. He's going to get two for the price of one off of turn number two here. It's a two for one special for Roger Pierce as he will complete the pass a little further back. You see Patrick Gitter along with Edward Shear Jr., Paul Bregoli, Johnny Baldridge all trying to just find their spot on the racetrack and get the position so they can start logging laps around the circuit. But still some great racing action mid-pack for the top ten. Yeah, this is where all the action has been tonight. If you're just now joining us, this has just been a an absolute dogfight here from about ninth on back. Has just been pure and utter chaos all night as Gitter going down to block the run from the 24 of Shira Jr. Jr. now side by side with the 17 of Johnny Baldridge. Coming up off of turn number four, Baldridge going to get a pretty good run. He's going to get to the outside of the 21 at Gitter, but Gitter has a decent run off the corner and he will beat him to the line and keep that 11 spot. Baldridge, though, Big time run off of four, and he's going to get clear of Gitter down into the corner. Gitter going to fight back, though. Coming up off of th turn number two, it looks like this is going to be Baldridge's position. A great run right there by Baldridge to power his way through around the outside, and now he's going to stay up towards about the half lane. Now, finally, Diamonds are down to the bottom of the racetrack. You've got to be careful how often you want to run that top line in this early on because you're just going to chew away at the tires so quickly as Shear Jr. looks to the inside of Gitter. Currently watching on as the field works their way off of turn number two. Everyone just trying to jockey for position. The 24 machine of Edward Shear Jr. tries to find the opening. Can't quite seem to make it work for him as we pick up the battle for 19th between Matt DeCiani and Austin Fitzgerald who are having a spirited battle for position here as they work their way across the back front straightaway heading off into turn one. Great battling here inside the top 20. Field works their way through the middle of turn one and two, and here comes a big run by the driver of Jonathan Oshulet, who has a tough break in the opening stages. He's now in contention for a top 20 finish. Working their way around this track here, we're working their way through, and of course, keeping an eye on several drivers here. How about one of the newest members to Ryko Performance? Roger Pierce, he's car number 27. He currently sits in eighth position. And uh, <laughs> if you look and notice, you'll see the Ryko Performance rookie strike on his machine as he works his way through. Hopefully so far for the rookie driver, putting on a stellar drive for the moment here for the Ryko Performance team as they work their way currently in eighth across the line. And he sets his sights on the driver of Joshua Watson, another Ryko Performance teammate as they come out through the middle of turn one and two. But we will pick up Sean Conklin, your race leader, with Nicholas Vroman leading the second place. Then you have uh, J.R. Borima and Andrew Navarro, your top four, as they try to go two by two, have their dancing partners, and continue to pull away. With that, we're going to take a quick moment here while we watch some of the sights and sounds and rev it up with Ryko.
Welcome back after that uh, sort of uh, rev it up there as Sean Conklin and uh, Nicholas Roman still leading this one and quite dominantly, I may, I may add, as they have pulled about almost two seconds in this kind of short run we've had so far as that's Andrew Navarro and J.R. Borborama still in third and fourth. Garrett Maines, though, up into the top five for the first time tonight since the start of this race. And he's looking for revenge here. Well, I mean, he's just having a time of his life right now, I have to say, Nick. I mean, I don't know if it's revenge because he missed the start. That's something on him. It's not like he got collected in an incident. So he's just recovering from the ish situation that happened before him. So we definitely might have to talk to him at the end of the race to see what happened that caused the situation at hand. But we're closing in on just about the halfway point here for tonight's race as they work down the back straightaway. This is about the battle for the 10th position or around the top 10. Actually, yeah, that is. It's Paul Bergoli along with the driver of Richard Garcia in ninth position. Bergoli on the outside lane, Garcia on the bottom in that black and neon yellow machine. As they work through the bottom of the racetrack, Garcia just trying to hold strong on the inside lane. But so far, Bergoli with the outside momentum is going to keep them side by side for the moment. Yeah, uh, things have really spread out. Uh, over this run, which is not something we're used to seeing. I mean, the, that first run, it kind of felt like there was pockets of racing pretty much anywhere you looked, and now it's kind of spreading out. So that makes me think that uh, the track is starting to change just a little bit. Just a little bit. Currently, right now, I have to say, for the race, the weather outside, it's windy. It's winds coming out of the south at 21 miles an hour. So you're really getting a strong... If I can remember correctly and can follow the right way of looking at this track, you're getting a strong tailwind coming down in the back straightaway for you. And it's 70 degrees air temperature. Track temperature, 101, so it's a little bit greasy. Yeah, if this was at, say, Talladega, that would be a uh, qualifying master's wet dream is having that much of a tailwind going down the back straightaway there. And fortunately, it is not a super speedway here as these guys... Okay. Uh, that is definitely going to lend to some struggles going into turn three when trying to save that right front a little bit. Ah, there's the Hornet's Nest. That's where it is. It's a little bit further back than what we saw earlier. Yeah, currently Patrick Gitter is leading that group of cars. 12th on back is where we'll see that Hornet's Nest as Gitter shuts the door right in front of Matt Cox and Miller Bonds as Bonds looks to the inside. He tries to give a big push right here and work their way through and continues to watch this battle for the 12th position. Miller Bonds to the inside of the 21. A getter caution on the racetrack. We got a car around the 19 of J.R. Borborema. Sideways on the back straightaway. Oh, I believe break. he got turned. Oh no, they were three wide off of turn number two. Look at the replay here. Uh, was this Maines getting a little bit over? Yeah, it was. That's a little too over aggressive this early in the stage. I mean, I understand the, the reasoning of if you see a hole, go for it. But also, there's a little bit of patience that needs to come into play when it comes to this early in the race. I mean, we're on lap 63 of 134. We still have 70 laps left to go in the race. Yeah, I just... Yeah, and just you old. know you have a faster vehicle. Yeah, that, that was a little bit too aggressive from Garrett Maines there. Just, the move, it looked like it was on, but that hole, that hole closed quicker than it opened. So, yeah. T tough mistake there, but here are Borborama now going to the back of the field. There's more pit stops here on lap number 63 as literally the entire field coming down pit road here. Well, if you think about it, we went about 30, some a little over 30 laps for the first caught after the first caution as far as for tire stops. So now we're about 30 laps into this second stage. So it's expected. And we're only a couple of laps away from the halfway point of tonight's race. Yeah. And if these guys get another uh, caution here within the next 20 or 30 laps, that should open this up to becoming a fuel mileage race is uh, the fuel window here at Texas Motor Speedway is between 55 and 60 laps. So these guys, uh, if, if these guys do get that caution within about 60 to go, I wouldn't be surprised to see everyone come down pit road and just try to try to fuel save this one to the end. 
Well, they get six sets of tires here for tonight's race. So, if you wanted to, try to do a little calculation. It'd be a, it, it would be about every 30 laps that you can pit. About every 22 laps. That's close. Yeah, you were close. Quick math for you there. May not always be right, but it's quick. <laughs> Oh, uh, goodness me. And uh, not much changing in terms of positions here, of course. I'm, get, I'm getting tired of saying it. Sean Conklin up in the lead, <laughs> Nicholas Vroman in second. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot more tonight. But Garrett Maines is up in third position now with uh, Anthony DeVaro down in fourth. You got Joshua Watson in the fifth spot with, I believe that is... Brennan Hemmel in sixth. Roger Pierce going to be in seventh with Richard Garcia in eighth. Paul Bergoli in ninth. And Patrick Ginner going to be running out your top ten here. Well, Sean Conklin, I mean, if you think about it, is probably one of the most dominant drivers that we've had in this season for the NASCAR iRacing Series, for especially for our Monday night and Friday night top splits when it comes to the A open cars. So who better than a really showcase? I mean, we, we went, he's been on a tear, and I would not be surprised if he's the one who takes the fight to Garrett Maines for this championship. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, Conklin and uh, Maines have had their fair share of battles throughout the season. I mean, who could forget that uh, just constant 10 lap side-by-side -side battle they had at Martinsville and then kind of the dog fight they got into at Bristol? I heard they had a pretty good battle at Richmond as well. I wasn't there for that race, but yeah, these two have been pretty much nose and tail all season. Yeah, but currently right now at the top of the leaderboard, it is Nicholas Broman who holds on to the points lead. Currently, if we look at the standings, Broman has a 124-point lead over Garrett Maines. Then it's Jacob Schneider in third, Alex Murray fourth, Matt DeCiani, Sean Conklin, Bruno Milo, Jacob Schneider, Matt Hollebaugh, and Miller Bollins, your top 10. Honestly, that's a bit surprising. I mean, you you would you would think with the amount of NISs uh, that we broadcasted this season and the amount that Sean Conklin has won of those races, I, I figured he'd be a little bit further up in points. John Conklin has a total of 10 wins so far, 18 starts. His average finish has been fifth position. You always got to love it when you get an average position or average finishing position in the top five. That's how you know you're a dominating force in the NIS scene. Absolutely. The average finish for Nicholas Broman is seventh. Average finish for Garrett Maines is eighth position. Schneider is 12th, DeCiani is 12th, Murray is 11th, and then you go to Sean Conklin, who's 5th. So, it is a little bit surprising. The only thing I can think of is how the I-rating system works when it comes to the points for the Wednesday and Sunday splits, if he chooses to race in those two. It's probably a good part of what it is, but back to green flag racing here as the pace car makes that turn on pit road the safety of pit road away from the relative chaos that we're about to witness here as sean conklin hits the gas once again green flag back in the air here at no limits texas and once again pulling a huge lead over the 95 of nicholas from that's going to give him that five or six car links down into turn one he has about a three to four car length lead over Garrett Maines, who now finally moves up to the P2, side by side for third between Vroman and Andrew Navarro, as all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack, we'll see Brandon Kimmel go three wide as he tries to get that fourth spot. Oh, Watson going to get a little bit loose there, and oh man, he got squeezed like a sandwich there, but he was able to survive as... My goodness, you really can't get away with three wide there. And they somehow made it work as Roger Pierce looked to the inside three wide. Getter was three wide for just a moment, but decided to back out of it here as things are starting to kick off here. About the top five or so is it is just pure chaos from fifth on back as Miller Bonds now making a move to the inside of the 17 and Johnny Baldridge. 
Roger Pierce, the rookie, showcasing some good talent here tonight for him as he's trying to hold a top 10 finish out of oh. turn at number four. A couple of cars hitting the outside wall. They gather it back up. Justin Prince hard across the line into the outside wall. He's on the wall three times there through turns four and down through the trial. Well, that's going to be a pretty good chunk of damage for that six machine. But, oh man, that is just a rough break there for Justin Prince. Oh, yeah, that, that's definitely going to cause some issues with the camper. And there you see the body work. Even though it's a composite body, they're a little sturdier. You can't keep beating on that side of the race car that much because of that very reason. Yeah, that is for sure going to be a, at least a bent toe link there for Justin Prince. But looks like he's able to continue without a beat ball flag there. So looks like Prince got lucky. Oh, hard into the outside wall. It's uh -oh. hole ball. And there oh, we go. My goodness, that is... Hollow balls in that. Oh, who is that? Is that, that is Jonathan ball. Oshlem? Nicholas Padovich, I believe, is who we saw sideways in the middle of our screen there. Yeah, this all figure out what here. happened here. Oh, well, looks like he just gets loose in two and smacks the outside wall there. Gets down into Nicholas Padovich. Couple of cars coming in late into that wreck and getting involved. And I think it was Padovich here. Oh man, nowhere to go for the 45 there. He thought he was safe and then until he, he wasn't. Away. Looks like he got a little bit lucky though. Only the really light contact on the rear and of course the hit that sent him around there. Yeah, that's going to be a big help right there. It's a little bit of damage. He can come down pit road, fix that damage a little bit, and then rejoin the race here with no significant issues. Interesting call on pit road. Sean Conklin coming down pit road. The only car to come down pit road as well. Another look at the replay here is... Oh, we had another light hit there that I didn't quite catch, but... Looks like for the most part, everyone else gets out relatively cleanly, though. Yeah, really interesting strategy call as everyone pretty much except for Sean Conklin inside the top 10 decides to stay out for the time being here tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking up and down and literally everybody else stayed out other than the cars that were involved in that wreck. And hmm. makes, that, that makes me think he got challenged to do a last to first like Garrett Mains did or something. That's the only thing I could think of as to why he would pit there. Yeah, it, it is something interesting as we do get an apology from Side Slick. Of course, Mr. Hollaball for uh, causing that caution. It's all good. We forgive you. Keep on and racing, and hopefully you can rejoin us for the next time. That promotes Garrett Mann's up into the lead, though. Because of that strategy call from the 54 of Conklin, that's going to put Andrew Navarro in third position, or excuse me, in second position with Nicholas Roman going to be in third, Watson in fourth, and Himmel's going to be running out your top five tonight. So that's that's one thing we really haven't seen change tonight is that top five has been pretty set in stone pretty much since the drop of the green flag tonight, of course, minus Sean Conklin pitting there. Yeah, it's gonna, we're going to see how this happens here and plays out for our drivers now as we're going to see what Garrett Mains can do as your race leader. And with him up in the front of the field with clean air, he is going to definitely try to see if he can pull away quickly. But the question is going to be, what will Conklin do with those fresh set of tires? Because looking over his pit top stop time, he sits 20th. He did take tires, a 14.6. That is definitely four tires and fuel for him to get out there and rejoin. He does have probably now three sets of tires. That could yeah, he'll be. Handy. Yeah, he'll be at three sets of tires for the rest of this race. And I still don't know why you would pit there. That was only what a three-lap run on the tires. Yeah, it is a weird strategy call, but we are talking to someone who's been on a bit of a tear when it comes to winning week after week. That is true. I, I don't don't even know why I'm questioning at this point.
But hey, while we... Well, we got a bit of a quiet moment. I mean, you got, what, one, two, three, four Ryko cars in your top five tonight, and I guess that's a perfect time to bring up Ryko Performance. At Ryko Performance, we are more than just a setup shop. We are a performance provider preparing you with weekly data setups to get you ahead of the curve on the competition. Whether you're a seasoned sim racer or a weekend warrior, our cutting-edge data packs and one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions are tailor-made to push the limits of yourself and your virtual race car, giving you the winning edge you crave. Why choose Ryko? Expert craftsmanship by a team of seasoned builders. Cutting edge performance enhancements tailored to your vehicle and unrivaled coaching and reliability to handle the most demanding circuits on the iRacing uh, platform. For more information, visit us at Ryko-Motorsports.com where we build championships and deliver results. Pretty much been a dominant, I think every time we've done a broadcast here on Monday and Friday nights, it's been a Ryko driver at the front of the field for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, we've had the one or two outliers that have won from other shops, but you know, you're right. I mean, it's been pretty much all Ryko all season long, and with the way that they've been stacking these top splits, I don't see that changing anytime soon. As, like I said, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars in the top ten, I believe, are Ryko powered. So, yeah, a uh, very dominating force here in these A Open and NIS top splits. But now a name we haven't said tonight, Garrett Maine's going to be leading the field to the green flag here as he gets up into the Geico restart zone. He's going to hit it, and it's going to be green flag once again here at No Limits Texas as he's going to pull out in front and get clear of Andrew Navarro. Andrew Navarro, though, going to get clear of the 95 of Roman, who's got Joshua Watson for company to his outside. Navarro is definitely a strong competitor. He competes in the E-NASCAR Road to Pro Qualifying Series, and he is going to go try to fight Garrett Maines for the race lead. This is the first time we've seen him side by side. Roman giving a big push to Navarro as they go two by two, four rows deep out of turn number four. 180 mile an hour pace laps here at Texas Motor Speedway, at least when, you, uh, when your top eight is concerned as Garrett Maines gets a pretty good run off the corner, and it looks like for the moment he had Navarro clear for just a second, but Navarro sends it deep down into the corner and gets a couple of car links over the 12 of Garrett Maines, though. But Maines has a run down the back straightaway. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to do much with it, though, and he's going to be content sitting second place here. Watching on as Navarro takes over the race lead as they work their way out of turn. At number four, Maines trying to put back the pressure. Here comes Roger Pierce, the rookie, around the outside and tries to get a good run inside the top five, but here comes Himmel. He will maintain it for the moment with that inside lane. Roger Pierce, though. Ooh, a little bit of contact between Roger Pierce and Brandon Himmel, but they both keep it straight. Pierce does not look happy with the 40 of Brandon Himmel. Himmel going to send it deep into the corner get clear for the moment of Roger Pierce, but Pierce gonna come out with the run on the outside line there off of turn number four. Pierce gonna have the run and it looks like he's just barely gonna beat the 40 of Brandon Himmel to the line. Just gonna try to do that here and Roger Pierce gotta be careful with how much he's gonna utilize that outside lane as best he can. Doesn't want to degrade the tires too much, gathers it on and tries to put the pressure. He'll get some help from Watson as they push themselves down the straightaway. Roger Pierce has the draft down into turn number three, but Himmel Gonna have that inside line advantage through three and four. Coming up off of turn number four, Pierce is a little bit closer than he was last time in terms of where he was compared to Hemmel, but Hemmel gonna beat him back to the line and Pierce not really able to do much there on that outside line as uh, Richard Garcia leaves him for, uh, for dust. Riding on board with Bregoli as he's in a cat first seat watching driver of Roger Pierce and Richard Garcia battling for the sixth spot. Pierce will hold on, but Garcia tries to get to the end sign as best he can. Garcia can't quite do it, as as here we see Bergoli get a great run off turn number four to close the gap. Bergoli getting a pretty good run, and this is kind of a breakaway here. This top eight, they've pulled about a second over ninth place. Patrick Gitter, who's in his own little hornet's nest further back, as he is currently three wide in the middle with Sean Conklin and Miller Bonds. He is in a Ryko sandwich, and he is the meat right now. He is. Yeah. Oh, goodness me. Here Ooh, we go. Got Double. a wreck here. That is. Can they save it? Then? Nope. Oh, oh man. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> we thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was until a car was upside down for a second. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my goodness. Uh, get a look at this replay here. This, yeah, this is starting up Clayton Hoffman and can't catch who that was, but oh my goodness, Derek Heitman. Nowhere to go in that 76 machine. I, I want to get an onboard with Heitman there for a second. Because he sees this happening in front of him and he goes up and next thing you know, he's got a face full of Clayton Hoffman. Boom! Uh, break right there i have to say for heitman as he will have to definitely deal with that later on so definitely gonna have to come down pit road and get some service and we'll see if the field comes down with him yeah it looks like most of the field is coming out and sean conklin should be the beneficiary but while pit stops are happening we're gonna go ahead and uh, send it to our second commercial break of the night stay here we will be right back with more coverage of top split nis coverage Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to No Limits Texas Motor Speedway. Here as we continue live coverage of Top Split NIS as we just had another round of pit stops after a very, very aggressive wreck is a good way, I guess, to put it as we saw Derek Heitman get up off of all four wheels and 
We had a lot of pit stops take place. It's now Matt Deciani is your leader, and he's got, I believe that is Tommy Gossett to his outside his company. He got Roger Pierce in third, Nicholas Padovich in fourth position with Richard Garcia in fifth, Miller Bonds in sixth, and that's like the first car who pitted is going to be Andrew Navarro. You got Froman in eighth, Mains in ninth, and Joshua Watson rounding out your top ten here. Is you got pretty much a completely different top five than what we're used to seeing as Pace car is going to make the hard left turn back onto the safety of pit road as Matt DeCiani has control over the field as they inch towards that green flag and he's going to hit it early as now green flag back in the air here at Texas Motor Speedway. How about Matt DeCiani with a great jump on the field to be able to pull away from the competition but here comes Roger Pierce and Tommy Gossett as a Ryko performance driver is trying to close in. A little bit of uh, three wide going on for just a second there coming off of turn number two, but they quickly back out of that. Oh, man, Nicholas Roman making a pretty aggressive move across the nose. Garrett Maines three wide in the middle of his teammates. He's got, I believe that is Nicholas Roman and a Joshua Watson. He's going to put Watson in the wall. Garrett Maines puts Joshua Watson in the wall. You got Paul Bergoli in the grass there. Things kicking off here at Texas Motor Speedway. How did no one die in that situation right there? Because that was I, absolute I chaos. No clue. Couldn't tell you. As more yeah. three wide as Garrett Maines takes it to the inside of, I believe that's Sean Conklin now, as he's to, uh, to the inside of, uh, no, that's Joshua Watson he's to the inside of. I get those two confused all the time. Right go, right go, violence is, oh, that's another car in the wall. We need Joshua a Watson. <laughs> we need a counter for how many times a car ends up into that wall on the front straightaway. I think we're at eight now for the race. I eight. think more. No, 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 it's, it's eight pretty sure okay. from my count uh, well your math is sometimes not the greatest that's not nice <laughs> who ever said i was nice you told me yourself you were nice well, as we watch this battle up further up oh, ahead, it's there's not <laughs> into the wall there's nine <laughs> oh goodness me so we're gonna keep an eye on this battle and see who else ends up into the front straightaway wall right there as Garrett Maines will get to the inside of the driver of the number 40, which is Hemmel, for the eighth position. As here it goes oh, to the man. inside, the rookie, Roger Pierce. Oh, man. <laughs> and we lost our good friend Nick for a moment. Hopefully he'll be back. If not, we'll hope for the best as he will sail away at the moment as he's currently having issues with his router. So here comes Roger Pierce, the rookie, to the race lead as he pulls away once again and gets his chance to represent Ryko Performance here tonight at Texas. Tommy Gossett also wants to get into the top two. He'll dive to the inside of Matt DeCiani for that second spot and clears him off turn to number four. Watching on board here with Tommy Gossett as he is looking to try to get that position and hold on. But Matt DeCiana gets right onto the back bumper in that Apex Design Chevrolet as they're going three wide behind them. Garrett Maines just absolutely blocked in a <laughs> wall of cars around him. He can't find any opening to get up back into the race lead or any into the top five as he currently sits seventh trying to get around the outside following Navarro around the outside lane and tries to get it work as Navarro almost hits the wall, making contact with Garcia. Oh, and Froman looks to the inside three wide, but Garcia blocks the move right in front of him, though. Andrew Navarro going to go three wide for just a second with uh, Garrett Maines and Richard Garcia. Now Conklin through the middle. He's got Garrett Maines and now his teammate, Nicholas Froman, right go three wide down the back straight away here at Texas Motor Speedway as now Garrett Maines gets clear of that and he's going to go on to attack the 57 of Richard Garcia and look at this Nicholas Padovich he was sideways about 30 laps ago and he's up here battling in the top five I don't know what's more faster the fact that Garrett Maines was able to get up and find his opening to get up towards the front of the field or Nicholas right here getting his internet rebooted Coming up off of turn number two, three wide once again between the Ryko teammates as now Sean Conklin is in the middle once again. Garrett Maine's not really anywhere to go. He's going to take it all the way to the outside here. T uh, Conklin gets tight. Three wide off of turn number four. Conklin gets tight again. Garrett Maine's in the wall. Oh, man, Conklin, and I believe that was Clayton. Or no, that's Brennan Himmel making a little bit of contact. Now Conklin to the inside of Nicholas Padovich and Garrett Maine's. And now Nicholas Roman to the outside of the 57 of Richard Garcia. Not really anywhere. Garcia's going to get loose off of turn number two. Now Sean Conklin, Garrett Maines to the inside three wide. 
As they are still surviving, Garcia has to back off a little bit right there. This allows the opening for the drivers of the Padovich and Con or Garcia to get around. Throw in Brendan Himmel as he will look to the inside. Further up front, you got Matt Deciani and uh, Andrew Navarro side by side. Deciani is going to give that up as now Nicholas Broman to the outside of the four. Matt Deciani, these guys are all on fresh tires. Deciani on a little bit older rubber than these guys. Sean Coughlin now to the outside. It looks like Garrett Maines wanted to go three wide through the middle there, but thinks better of it as he has been put into the wall a few times here going three wide at Texas Motor Speedway. And with that, they now die down just a little bit. Go single file for the moment. And now we have a little bit of a calm before the storm. Oh, thank goodness. I'm this close to a heart attack if these guys keep going three wide. Yeah, don't die on us now. We still have work to do. No promises. But anyway, Tommy Gossett now to the inside of Andrew Navarro. Nicholas Vroman now in the popcorn seat. He's going to take it to the middle three wide for just a moment. Gossett backs out of it, though. Now Conklin side by side with Garrett Maines. Right in front of him, Nicholas Vroman side by side with Andrew Navarro. And Roger Pierce leading this hornet's nest that has just kind of exploded in the top 10. It really has, as here comes Navarro around the outside, Conklin, Maines, I mean, you're looking at a hornet's nest of some of the top drivers in the NASCAR I Racing Series as Broman is trying to hold off Navarro, who tries to cross him up down the back straightaway. Andrew Navarro does the up and under on the 95 of Broman. Uh, Richard, or uh, excuse me, Roger Pierce gets a little bit tight through three and four there, and that's going to allow... Uh, both Andrew Navarro and Nicholas Vroman to get up to the rear bumper of that 27 machine going through the trioval. Pierce now having to defend from two hotheads in terms of I rating is now three wide for the lead. Roger Pierce all the way up the track is now Vroman's in the middle three wide. Andrew Navarro to the inside and it looks like Nicholas Vroman's going to come out the winner there is now Sean Conklin, Garrett Maines and uh, Roger Pierce side by side for that third position. Sean Conklin through the middle. He's going to slide up and take away the air for the 27 of Roger Pierce. Coming up off the corner, Garrett Maines to the inside now. Look to the inside of Andrew Navarro there, but nothing going as now Conklin looking to the outside three wide. Pierce saw that chaos and thought, I am going to step out of here and let you guys have at it. And I'm just going to hold position and wait to see what happens. Sean Conklin to the inside of the, uh, the the 42 of Andrew Navarro, Himmel and Gossett side by side right behind Roger Pierce, but our eyes are on this battle for third position. Actually, no, they're not as Himmel's looking to the outside three wide just behind this. Thinks better of it as he backs up just a little bit, but crucially, Garrett Maines does get clear of the 54 of Conklin, and now Navarro looking to the outside of Conklin. Conklin looking to the inside of Garrett Maines. Things kicking off here in the top five. And Nicholas Broman is just trying to see if he can scoot away bit by bit here. He's got about a two-tenths of a second lead over Garrett Maines. Conklin, though, giving a push to Maines. And there you see Navarro right there in the mix. As here comes Tommy Gossett and Brandon Himmel down to the bottom of the racetrack. Brandon Himmel going to get clear for just a moment of the 27 of Roger Pierce, though. Pierce going to fight back on the outside as now Centennial Lap here at Texas Motor Speedway. Lap number 100 has begun here, and we are officially in the end game as things st starting to calm down a little bit. People starting to calm down, try to save a little bit of tires. As that's, a, that's a lot of loose race cars. Roger Pierce getting big time loose off a two. He was able to hold on nice and dandy right there for him. You're right on board with the right go rookie of Roger Pierce as he holds on to the position. But here comes Richard Garcia as another car hits the outside wall off turn number four. Put that as number 10 as they continue to drag oh, race into Himmel. turn one. Himmel just slammed the wall into turn number one, make it 11 that have hit the front stretch wall there. It's now Himmel having to defend from the 57 of Richard Garcia who's wanting to get into this top five. Going down into turn number three, he's got the nose there, but it looks like Himmel's got the run through the corner. Coming up off of turn number three and four, looks like Himmel, oh man, Himmel almost hitting the wall off of four there. Himmel gathers it back up here as he sits that fifth position as he tries to hold the outside lane. Garcia, though, trying to power back down on the inside and clears, not quite though, he's a little bit away from trying to clear this lane. Man, if only Texas raced like this in real life. I, I don't know what I would do with myself if Texas raced like this in real life. <laughs> it would be a lot more exciting, and we wouldn't have to worry if this is going to turn into a drafting track in the coming years. Please don't turn this into a new Atlanta. Just give us the old banking with new pavement. That's all this track ever needed. Hmm. <laughs> 
I, I, have to agree. I am so glad nobody can hear Darby over our mics because he just had one of the worst takes I think I've ever heard. Well, it's got to be better than what we've seen at Martinsville and Richmond. That, that is fair, but, but yeah, that, that, that's fair, but Texas has been one of the worst races since the reconfiguration. Anyway, back to the racing product on track, which has been nothing but, but exciting. No boring here at all, as these guys have just been going off here. As you got Tommy Gossett, Roger Pierce, and now Paul Bergoli wanting to get in on this battle for kind of the top five here, as things have spread out from about sixth on up, as not really any fighting going on between the top six. No, everyone's just trying to hold on, find their way through, and get themselves situated up through the track. As we go a little further back, where Tommy Gossett is, as he's trying to get his way up through the field. How about the 19 machine of JR? He was then involved in the incident, now worked his way up. Look, here's another car that's worked his way up. Ed Shearer Jr. now fighting for, I believe that's 13th spot with Patrick Gitter for the moment, but doesn't have the momentum or the run to be able to fight the 21 at Gitter there, but do believe Ed Shearer Jr. is one of our bigger movers of the race as he's gone from 30th to 14th, so he is up 16 positions right now. Well, here they go, side by side a little further back. You see the driver, of course, of, trying to get the number, that's Miller Bonds, who's trying to work his way to the inside. That's on Alan Wilson there. This is for 23rd position, I believe, as Miller Bonds had a bit of a setback but he's trying to work his way back up through the field as a little bit further up. This is Joshua Gathright, and I believe that's Jonathan Oshalem there duking it out for position. They are having a spirited fight for the position here as we pick up Edward Shear Jr. sitting in 15th as he tried to get around Matt Cox, but not going to work at the moment as here comes Frederico around the outside. Ed Shearer Jr. is starting to fall off a little bit. He was up fighting 21 at Patrick Gitter, but now he's lost about four spots in the last couple of laps. It looks like that 24 has kind of burned off his tires just a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be the case where right now a lot of these drivers are starting to worry about how much their tires are going to be here. Currently, they're at lap 26 for those inside the top six. Gossett, 36 lap old tires. So now the question is going to be how well, as we have a battle for the race lead, Mains to the inside of Roman. And that was a pretty well and easy pass. As now Vroman going to fight back to the inside here, side by side for the lead. Garrett Main is getting a little bit loose off the corner. Nicholas Vroman now to the inside, side by side for the lead at the line. They're going to give that one to Garrett Mains. As now Vroman going to dive into the inside of turn number one. He will get clear of the 12 of Garrett Mains. Garrett Mains, though, setting up for the up and under, and he's going to make it work here quite aggressively, I might add, as now he's going to try to go down the track and avoid the side draft from the, uh, the, from the 95 of Nicholas Vroman. As now Vroman is going to get cleared by the 12 of Garrett Mains, but once again, these two setting up for this up and under battle that we've seen the last couple of weeks. It is the way it has been between these three drivers here, throwing Conklin in the mix, because that's how it's been, how the strategy usually works out, and Mains tries to fight his way through with him now leading this race. We're going to see what he can do in the closing stages. 24 laps to go. Oh, Sean Conklin just got into the wall for just a moment off of turn number two there as he was working past the 57 of Richard Garcia. That was for, I believe, fifth position there. As now Conklin going to be promoted up into fourth spot and things starting to kind of wane off a little bit in terms of the action here in the top ten. A little bit of a calm before the storm as we pick up a couple of drivers here. There you see Conklin getting around Garcia. Now tries to set his sights on Brendan Himmel for that third spot to at least get on the podium and get some much valuable points. Got Tommy Gossett up here as well. He's uh, leading this kind of, you know, this is kind of setting off here a little bit further back. This is Paul Bergoli leading this group. He's in eighth position as Watson gets a little bit loose on the outside of the four. Matt DiCiani. DiCiani now to the inside of turn number one here. Going to dive it down. Not really able to get much going there for that four machine, but then again, he is on old tires compared to the rest of the field here, and he's just holding on for dear life. So is Paul Bergoli off the corner there. Pretty interesting to see how this will work out here as Mr. William Phillips talk about how Nicholas Vroman is the man, and well, he's so far trying to beat the man of Garrett Mains as they come across the front straightaway here, closing in on just about a few laps left to go in the race. You're right on board with Vroman. 
right on Morbid from and just sitting in that dirty air. That's good. Got a nice flannel fire suit there. I don't think I've ever seen flannel and fire suit mixed together. That's a new one. Yep, add Navarro to the list of hitting the wall. wall off of turn number two. He's got Tommy Gossett to his inside for company. As these two battle it out for the eighth spot here. Things starting to kick off a little, or excuse me, that's for the sixth spot there. As there's Gitter in the outside wall for just a moment. Three wide for the back, Joshua Watson, Matt DiCiani, and I believe that's Matt Cox there as well. No, that's actually J.R. Borborama as uh, DiCiani get going back out of that situation and uh, mercifully somehow not make any more contact than he did. Keeping an eye here as we're two by two, a little further back between JR and Joshua Watson and several other drivers. This is the battle right around seventh and eighth position, throwing Tommy Gossett in the mix as they try to chase down your top four. Yeah, this is about seventh on back. I was just, just absolutely popped off here as, yeah, this is about 17th, or excuse me, seventh back to about 15th spot is now offset three wide further back. Matt Cox on the middle here as now he's got Anthony Federico, a little bit of contact between the two. They somehow managed to keep it straight as a little bit further up. You got uh, uh, Andrew Navarro and Tommy Gossett side by side. This is for the eighth spot here as he's gonna, the 42 of Navarro going to squeeze the 80 at Gossett through turns one and two. Here they go down the back straightaway. Several drivers just trying to find their opening here. Watson and Conklin and several others. Gossett stuck in the middle here as he's trying to hold on for position. Warner Raymond now sends Tommy Gossett three wide with Andrew Navarro on the top. These three, oh, a little bit of contact. Navarro in the outside wall, but they keep it straight. DiCiani to the inside, three wide, more contact between Matt Cox and Tommy Gossett. They are able to hold on to this. How come we didn't see a caution? Because these are some of the best of the best here. And there you see Matt Cox trying to find an opening around Navarro for oh. position. As here comes Tommy Gossett down to the bottom. Andrew Navarro gave a little bit of a hip check to the idiot Tommy Gossett there going down the back straightaway saying, hey, buddy, I wasn't very happy with that. Why'd you do that to me? Navarro going to get tight. That's going to put Matt Cox into the wall. Somehow still no contact between the two as now Matt Cox looks to the outside of Tommy Gossett. But now Navarro sends a deep dive bomb. A little bit of contact gives the bumper to the idiot of Tommy Gossett. And, ah, oh man, Gossett saves it there somehow. Ed Shearer Jr. now to the outside of the 80. I'm surprised we're seeing some great racing action right here as we watch this battle inside the top 20 as Matt Cox holds on to the 10th spot. He is the gatekeeper for these drivers behind them as they come out of turn number four. Matt Cox and Ed Sherrod Jr. got in the wall there. I believe Anthony Federico got into the outside wall as well. As now Sherrod Jr. going to send a dive bomb to the inside of Matt Cox, uh, to the inside of Matt Cox, who looks to attack the four Matt DiCiani, J.R. Borborema, and now Sean Conklin. Side by side as things are starting to kick off now once again on the edge of the top 10. Here they come side by side and who is that right there? That's the 19 of JR who's trying to hold on to that inside lane in the eighth spot. Matt DiCiani right there behind him. Sean Conklin struggling to try to find his way back up through the field in seventh position. Matt DiCiani gives a bump to the 19 of Borborema down into turn number one. That's gonna get the 19 of Borborema a little bit loose uh, going up into the corner, a little bit of contact between the 54 of Conklin and the 19 of uh, J.R. Borborema. That's going to allow Matt DiCiani now back into this fight as they're going to stay too wide here as now Tommy Gossett going to take it all the way up next to the wall right behind these guys and try to set up for a massive run here as DiCiani now to the inside but backs out a little bit as he sees J.R. Borborema coming down. J.R. Borborema is trying to hold on to that position right there and how about three wide? Conklin gives him a little bit of a pinch off turn number two. They're still going to do it. How about four oh. wide off turn two? Oh, man, four wide off the corner there. Come on, boys. This ain't going to work down into the corner. They're going to do it anyway. Contact between J.R. Borborema and Sean Conklin. But they survive as Matt Cox comes out the beneficiary there. He's going to get four for the price of one coming through at the back stretch in turns three and four. I have never seen four wide make it stick, and someone still comes out on top. I can't believe I just witnessed that, but it just happened. Big round of applause for those four drivers to survive that one. I, <laughs> I've i never seen four wide work, and that, that was impressive. That was genuinely impressive there. 
Absolutely, as we watch these drivers work their way through, closing in on just about 12 laps to go. Making 11 laps to go next this time by as they work their way into one, and they're still trying to battle it out here as J.R. Bomarima is trying to get his way back into the top 10. Conklin trying to still pinch him out the corner exit. Yeah, Conklin and Borborema have been at each other's throats for the better part of the last 10 laps. They've been side by side for the better part of those last 10 laps, and these two have just been kicking each other for everything it's worth, and not one of them has come, to come out on top of each other just yet, but, you know, we're coming up to the end of this race, coming up to about 10 laps to go here at Texas. Eventually, one of these guys has got to win this battle. Somebody does. Will they do it? Well, we're going to find out here as they work their way through the middle of the corners. Three wide, a little further back. Three wide further back in the field. Oh, got a car on the wall up front. Now, Matt DeCiani was into the wall for just a moment, but our eyes are staying on this battle for about 15th. This is Joshua Gathray, Roger Pierce, and I believe that is uh, Jonathan Oshelim in this battle as well. Roger Pierce really loose off the corner. Andrew or, uh, Oshelim in the wall off of turn number four as well as Further back up front, we got things starting to pop off once again as now looks like Federico's finally going to get clear of the 54 of Conklin off the corner. Here they come down the back straightaway. Everyone putting on a stellar drive here as here comes Edward Shear Jr. to the bottom of Cox. Gitter now. He wants to try to get that second spot away from Vroman. Oh, man, Gitter, that's not a name we've called tonight. He's up in second place now as he is about four hundredths of a second off the 95 of Roman at the line. Richard Garcia's in on this battle. Caution on the racetrack. Matt Cox is around. Matt Cox, who we saw make four wide work a few laps ago in the outside wall in turn one. Looking at the replay here. He's got Ed Sherrod Jr. to his inside here. Oh, does he try to make three wide? Yeah, he just tried to force three wide there on Ed Sheeran Jr. and it did not work there. So if, if that was the craziness we saw on 40 lap old tires, what are we gonna see with five to go? Uh, uh, Over time, that's the best thing I can say. <laughs> you see another look here, Matt Cox is trying to make four, uh, excuse me, three wide work there and Unfortunately, three wide into one almost never works and ends up with a car in the outside wall. I'm going to go ahead and assume that everyone's going to be coming down pit road here. About five laps. Yep, I I called it. Everyone's coming down pit road here as more people staying out our lap cars. And you see another look at the replay here, just trying to make three wide work and to a place that you really can't go three wide is... Pit Road is a busy, busy place. And everyone's coming down to get some fresh Goodyear tires for this dash to the finish. And we're going to see who wins the race off Pit Road. Whoever wins this race will be in contention to win this race here tonight. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me as we're seeing a lot of people take two tires. Oh my goodness, literally everyone in your top five taking two tires here is Conklin, interestingly enough, takes four Whereas everybody else taking uh, two tires there. The bar our board road still to repair some damage to the stuff right in the as main gitter for Roman decently on the goalie to the top five. The mix up here is that's a couple of names we haven't seen tonight. Of course, Garrett Nance has been leading for the better part of this race. He's been working his way up and has been leading since about lap 50. Gitter's been up there as well. Later stage of this race, Roman has been up there all night. Hemsel's been up in the top five fight as well. And Paul Rigoli, he's been on the uh, lower edge of the top 10 all night, but finds himself in a very good spot in fifth position. Ooh, well, <laughs> what a moment to catch your breaths right here, Nick. But I got to yeah, say, I'm, I'm trying to prepare myself for this. <laughs> exactly. Prepare yourself for the chaos that's about to ensue. My throat already hurts, but we're just going to pop a Tylenol and send it. Let's go. <laughs> That's me right now. How do you think I'm going to feel after this race is over? <laughs> You'll live. No, I won't.
But we're going to be coming up to, I think we're going to be restarting this race with four laps to go here at Texas. So that is a ton of time for hijinks to ensue. Once again, your top 10 is standing as follows. Garrett Maines leading right now with Patrick Gitter second. Vroman going to be in third. Deciani in fourth with Paul Bricoli going to be in fifth spot. Tommy Gossett going to be in sixth after starting 29th tonight. Edward Shearer Jr. in seventh after starting 30th. Richard Garcia in eighth after starting 25th with Joshua Watson in ninth. And J.R. Borborema going to be rounding out your top 10 tonight. Got a few big movers mixed in with some people that have been in the top 10 all night. So things are definitely set up for a barn burner finish here at Texas Motor Speedway. And I, I for one, am very excited to see how this thing ends. I am too. And we should be getting the lights out this time by. Yes, we will be as the lap car is going to get the wave around here and it's going to allow Garrett Maines and Patrick Gitter to take their spots at the front of this field. And oh, boy, you can feel the tension rising right now for this race. We, we, we've seen how crazy finishes can get here at Texas, and especially this week. I mean, we saw the four wide from Matt Busa and turn one with eight to go in Monday on Monday night. You, you saw that ensuing restart have all of, all of its fun. Oh, man, you, you could just feel the tension rising here. Well, the tension is about to explode here, and all i got to say is, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your hats, because it's going to get a little bit wild here. This is going to be exciting. Who's going to come out on top with this five, four lap dash to the finish? Yeah, hold on to your hats and probably turn your volume down a little bit, because uh, the way we're setting up for a finish here, I think uh, both, both me and Taylor are going to get a little bit loud here. Maybe not Taylor, maybe just me, but who knows? But once again, Garrett Maines leading this. No other word for it, but hornet's nest of a field that is about to be kicked multiple times. And, oh, boy, you, you, you just have a feeling something's going to happen here, whether it be good or bad. Something will happen here in the final four laps at Texas Motor Speedway. And here we go. Pace car is off, heading and hiding on pit road waiting for this thing to kick off once again. Garrett Maines has control. He's going to get a bump from the 95 of Nicholas Vroman. Green flag back in the air here at Texas Motor Speedway is now Patrick Gitter. Nicholas Vroman side by side. Gossett gets down in front of Ed Shearer Jr. Crucially down into turn number one. Patrick Gitter side by side with the 95 of Vroman. Vroman's going to try to play blocker here for his teammate Garrett Maines. It's all for nothing here as they come out of turn number two, down the back straightaway. Let's bring the excitement. Vroman trying to cross over. Garrett Maines throws the block left, right, goes down to the bottom of the racetrack out of turn number four. It's two by two from third on Ooh. back, three wide as they come across the line. Ed Shearer Jr. sits Tommy Gossett three wide. You've got Richard Garcia. That's for about seventh position there as things are starting to kick off here once again. Three wide further back as now. Coming up off of turn number four, you got a ton of cars looking for somewhere to go. Ed Shearer Jr. sideways off the corner. Huge wreck, Sean Conklin's involved. Well, we called it. Yeah, you, you did. Overtime it is. Looking at this replay here and the long neck cam here of Ed Shearer Jr. as he just gets a little bit loose and makes a little bit of contact with Tommy Gossett and that is Sean Conklin nailing the inside wall there. they got a lot of big names out of this one right here. As there you see Shear Jr. looped around. Conklin involved. Several others. Garcia, oh, Pajara. Gathright with a hellacious hit to the inside wall there. Kind of, rem this is kind of reminiscent of... Eric McClure at Dega back in what was it, 2013, I think? I believe so. Let's get another look at this replay here. Yeah. Oof. A couple of really hard hits there, and that's unfortunately going to take Sean Conklin out of this race, and that is that is what taking four tires when everyone else takes two tires will, will do to you. 
you, you get caught back in the middle of the pack and things kick off in front of you and you got nowhere to go. So I got to ask this, what are the odds that uh, that we make it through this first green-white checker attempt? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I got to say, this will be the only one. I think it'll back it down. Not completely, but at least make it to the white flag. I've seen how these top spl splits play out. We're getting at least one more green-white checker. There's no way that these guys uh, don't at least have one more because I, I've seen these guys race when it comes to uh, comes to a top split win, and yeah, these guys get feral for that win. Go ahead and reset our top ten real quick. Garrett Main still in first position. Nicholas Roman in second. Gitter fell back to third on that restart with Paul Bergoli in fourth position. Now Matt DeCiani going to be up in the fifth spot with Richard Garcia in sixth. Tommy Gossett fell back down to seventh with Jared Borborema moving up to eighth position. Joshua Watson stays in ninth, and Anthony Federico moves up into tenth spot. Good run for Anthony Federico, given the fact of his situation that happened to him in the early race. Yeah, ended up sideways on the grass and took a pretty hellacious hit, so good on him to be back up fighting in the top 10 here and the way this thing's setting up wouldn't be surprised to see him move up a couple of more spots at least good possibility to do it yeah with how crazy these restarts get especially these late race restarts you you, you could stand to gain a little and stand to lose a lot as well so high risk not a lot of reward if you're in the top 10 right now couple of guys talking about Mr. Paul Bregoli, who sits in fourth position in one of his best nights we've seen. Yeah, one of his better races, as you mentioned. I mean, he's had his fair share of good runs, but not really anything to bat an eye at recently, as he's had a bit of a rough stretch recently. So I got to ask, are you sticking with your pick? I, I, I don't even remember who your pick is. I picked Navarro. Uh, I unfortunately have to still stick with my pick, but he is currently 27th. He got caught up in that one of the late race incidents. So unfortunate for me, I will not get any points for tonight. Yeah, I'm for sure sticking with my pick because uh, he has a chance to win this race right now. Lights on the pace car are out as, once again, tension starts to rise here, especially in this top 10 as people start to realize that this is quickly becoming one of their last opportunities to get any track position that they can and would not be surprised to see some three wide going down into turn one. And heck, I mean, we've seen four wide a couple of times tonight. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see some into turn one here as well. Mm-hmm. Keeping an eye here. This is going to get exciting because now we're going to see some of these drivers who took those two tires. Can they just get that opening and maybe be for someone like Gitter or Bergoli? They're in the catbird seat where if Mains and Vroman get at it, beat and bang a little too much coming off the corner, that opens the door for maybe them to squeeze on through. Yeah, two tires are a lot more powerful here at Texas. I mean, we saw in the Monday night SOF race, Nicholas Vroman won that race after pitting for two tires with 25 laps to go. So. Two tires is definitely a viable strategy here at Texas. And yeah, it looks like everyone's realized that as I'm pretty sure everyone in your top 10 took two tires onto that pit stop, but uh, tension rising once again. Garrett Maines has control of the field here as he rolls through the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air here at Texas Motor Speedway as no counts for the teammates as he's gonna leave his teammate Nicholas Froman out to dry. Certainly is. They're gonna keep on going and here they go through the middle. Here comes Patrick Gitter. He wants that second place. 
Gitter makes the move to the inside of the tw uh, 95 at Nicholas Vroman. Now he sets his sights on the 12 of Garrett Mains. Things starting to kick off further back as Brendan Himmel sends it to the inside of Joshua Watson. Three wide further back. Gitter now having to defend from the 95 of Vroman. Paul Bergoli all the way up. He's got Richard Garcia behind him looking to get in. Uh, Matt DiCiani now looking as further back. A little bit of contact. That's uh, uh, Tommy Gossett putting someone up into the outside wall there for a moment. Four wide. I thought I saw for just a second there. They just got to watch on here. They made it to the white flag, so whatever happens, it's going to be all the way to the checkered flag down the back straightaway. Main sidewinding his way down the back stretch. Through turns three and four. Garrett Mains playing the Indy Snake here as he's trying to break the draft. He's going to uh, got a pretty good chance at winning this one. Is coming off of turn number four. Garrett Mains, last to first. He's going to win here at Texas Motor Speedway as they wreck big time behind. Garrett Maines after starting second position, missing the start, going back to 36th on lap one. For lack of a better word, does last to first and comes back to win tonight at No Limits Texas Motor Speedway. Stellar drive from pit road to the race win. Watch him burn it down here as this is a well-deserved win for that 12 car. Is it is incredibly hard to win in top split, but to go, but to go from last to first is even more impressive. Dude pulled the good old Joey Logano there, the power slide and the donuts, impressive set of donuts there. Oh, man, he is burning him down for everything it is worth right now. And with that winning moment, we're going to go ahead and send it to our final commercial break of the night. Once we get back, we'll have race results and post-race coverage here at Texas Motor Speedway. back live here at Texas Motor Speed. We got some unofficial race results here. Garrett Maines does the last to first basically challenge here as he finishes first place tonight with Patrick Gitter coming home a solid P2. Nicholas Roman going to be finishing in third position tonight after running up front all night. The rest of the order follows. Paul Bergoli in fourth, Richard Garcia fifth, Matt Diciani in sixth, J.R. Borborema in seventh, eighth place going to be Anthony Federico, ninth going to be Tommy Gossett, and Jonathan Oshalem going to be finishing in tenth position tonight. Joshua Watson will come home 11th with Austin Fitzgerald 12th, Miller Bonds 13th with Alan Wilson the 3rd and 14th, Roger Pierce will be in 15th with Andrew Navarro 16th, Edward Shear Jr. in 17th, Alan Pajara 18th, Justin Prince 19th, and Trevor Trigo rounds out your top 20. Rest of the field is as follows. Matt Cox in 21st position, Johnny Baldridge 22nd, Brandon Himmel in 23rd position, Maggie McGuire in 21st, or 24th, excuse me, last car on the lead lap. Nolan Hodgson going to be the first car one lap down in 25th position, Nicholas Padovich in 26th, Joshua Gathright in 27th, two laps down, Luke Doran in 28th, Sean Conklin going to finish six laps down tonight in 29th position, Pedro Palladino 30th, Clayton Hoffman 31st, Derek Heitman 32nd, Matt Hollaball 33rd, Robert Miller in 34th position, Austin Edstrom in 35th and Damon Burnett in 36th position tonight. Go ahead and lead that into our post race show. Let's go and get some interviews going as I believe Taylor Burris is standing alongside Nicholas Roman. Here with Nicholas Roman, Nick, you, you came home with a strong finish in third place here tonight, but I feel like if you had just had a little bit of a better start, you would have had something for Mains. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm terrible at restarts. I suck. I'm just going to pack it up and go home. But uh, it, 
We had a real good car, man. Um, I don't know if I would have had something with dirty air. It's just, it's so hard to pass in those first few laps. And if the outside, you know, you just punch them a little bit and you're good to go. But uh, we'll never know. Well, I mean, still a good points night for you. You're still leading the championship after this by the looks of it. Uh, what can we expect to see as we head to Talladega? Ah, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm saying I'm, I'm not going to qualify. I'm going to start in the back. I think we're going to get a caution. I'm going to go back to the back on purpose, go to the front. It's just going to be a fun fun race for me. I always, I always have a blast when I go to these tracks. Well, before we let you go, Nick, anyone you'd like to say thank you to? Uh, yeah, man, everybody on Rayco, um, Ken and uh, Jacob, you know, we, we put a – that's we put a lot of work into this set this week. A lot. I think me and Jacob together ran like 2,000 laps or something freaking crazy. Um, so shout out to everybody on Ryko. Shout out to you guys up in the booth. And shout out to everybody on track. You know, Gitter and you know all them guys. It was it was a fun race. It was a lot better than the last few weeks has been. So, so shout out to everybody on track tonight. That is Nicholas Roman, your finisher in third position as our very own Nick Stein has caught up with our race winner, Mr. Garrett Mays. Garrett Mains, next time up in the booth. And first question I got to ask, and I already I think you knew we were going to ask this. Why, why'd you start in the pits today? Uh, you see, you know, I decided, you know what? Actually, I want to water. It's got like 45 seconds left on the grid. And I'm like, I, I know I can do that in like, you know, about 30, maybe 25 seconds. And I'm on the way back. And I'm like, you know, I got to use the bathroom too. So I did that. And about the time I got back, I, I was counting. I knew I had three seconds left. And, uh, Kind of forgot there's a package literally right inside my door. Stumbled right across it as I walked in, and I only had enough time to click the button, and I saw zero as I clicked it, and it put me on the grid in the pits. So, yeah, I guess that's where we'll start the race, but uh, this is probably one of the better tracks for that to happen at, because I started high enough up that like I didn't really lose the field. I didn't get involved in the wreck either, so, um, you know, made for a fun race, I guess, as a repeat of Wednesday, where... It was literally wrecked on lap one, so it's a little bit better than that, but I, I don't know. It's fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Yeah, you went from uh, second to 36th to first in the span of about 80 laps there and uh, pretty much put a whipping on the field there. And uh, that thing got a little bit crazy there at the end, and you were able to come away with that. Uh, who do you got to thank? Who gets it done for you? Well, huge shout out to the guys at Ryko Performance, um, Roman and Jacob put so much time into this car this week, and we had an absolute rocket i mean this is probably one of the most enjoyable texas races i've ever run like we could move around we had the pace pretty much in any lane um i think i probably didn't adjust enough adjust the car enough for that last run definitely uh got pretty tight when it cooled off but i think for 95 percent of that race we were sitting in a really pretty spot and we definitely had the short run pace there at the end so happy we could get it done and shout out to all those guys big thank you to mcu body lennox uh, the guys at Left Court Brothers and FGR XL for all their support as well. Yeah, coming home with the win there tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. No Limits Texas. Congratulations on the win tonight, Garrett. Thank you. That was Garrett Mains, and last but not least, uh, got second place here, Patrick Gitter in the 21 machine. Patrick, how, how are you tonight? Hey, looks like we do not have Patrick Gitter for post-race interview, unfortunately. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there tonight as we had a quite exciting race there at Texas Motor Speedway tonight and really can't ask for a much better race there. And, you know, final thoughts from you, Taylor. Well, I mean, it's just another great week here at Texas Motor Speedway or within the virtual world. It just shows that the virtual world can put on some great drives week in and week out, and we see that here, and we just saw another classic battle to the finish between some of the top drivers, and of course, it's only going to improve as we head off to Talladega. Yeah, Talladega next week, one of the more exciting plate tracks out there, and I, am, I for one, am very excited from that, but on the entire Grid Vision team, I'd like to thank you for watching and participating in chat. All you guys were insane tonight. For more information on how to get your league broadcasted or starting your career in broadcasting, contact us on Facebook X or email us at info at gridvision.live. Special thanks to Andrew Cardinal IV for, of Whiplash Sim Camps for providing the camps used today on today's broadcast. And congratulations to uh, Garrett Maines on winning tonight's race from No Limits Texas Murder Speedway. This has been Nick Stein, got uh, Taylor Burris on the color, and uh, producer being Austin Derbyshire. We will see you next time on The Grid.